بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والنجم إذا هوى ما ضل صاحبكم وما روى إلى عاد أخاه هود هود عليه الصلاة والسلام was sent to the nation of عاد and he was from the same nation أخاه he was their brother which means from the same nation The result of his da'wah, all of his work, كَذَّبَتْ عَادٌ الْمُرْسَلِينَ The people of Ad rejected the messengers. And if you pay attention, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not saying that they just rejected Hud alayhi salam or didn't use the word al-rasul. In fact, al-mursaleen, all messengers. Which means rejecting one messenger is like rejecting all the messengers. So for Iman, we need to have a belief in all the Anbiya alayhimu salatu wassalam. If a person rejects one of the Anbiya, he's rejecting all the Prophets. Which means he's rejecting the faith. إِذْ قَالَ لَهُمْ أَخُوهُمْ هُودٌ أَلَا تَتَّقُونَ Now, let's look at some of the conversation that went on between the Two groups here, Hud uh, alayhi salam and his people. Very briefly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Shu'ara, إِذْ قَالَ لَهُمْ أَخُوهُمْ هُودٌ أَلَا تَتَّقُونَ Their brother Hud said to them, Don't you fear Allah? إِنِّي لَكُمْ رَسُولُ الْأَمِينَ I'm a very faithful, honest messenger that have been sent to you. Which means, when I'm inviting you, I'm not trying to put you through hardships, difficulties, make things difficult to you. I'm honest and I'm trying to help you in this situation. فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَاطِعُونَ So fear Allah, obey me. وَمَا سَلُكُمْ عَلَيْهِ مِنْ عَجْرٍ And I do not claim any reward from you for this. And this is a common message that you find from all the Anbiya alayhi salatu wassalam telling their people, I'm not asking you for anything in return. I'm doing this only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm here to help you. I'm not expecting anything in return from you. Most of the time, when we do something, we expect something back. To the extent, nowadays, even when you invite someone, you expect something back. You know what is that? You expect him to invite you later on. Or when they have their gathering, their function, when they have any occasion in their family, they would invite me too. When we present a gift to someone, you expect similar type of gift. You gave someone a gift that was of a higher value, and he gave you something that worth a few dollars, Next time, you are not giving him no gifts. See, this is a problem that we always expect something in return for anything we do. Anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam, with the great work they're doing, so much sacrifice that they're offering for their people, but they're saying to them, In ajriya illa ala rabbil alameen. My reward is only with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And now look at what he's telling them. أَتَبْنُونَ بِكُلِّ رِيعٍ آيَةً تَعْبَثُونَ Do you construct a monument, landmark, on every high place and with no solid purpose for it? Which is telling us what they used to do. Trying to figure out what is it that these people are doing. أَتَبْنُونَ بِكُلِّ رِيعٍ آيَةً تَعْبَثُونَ On every hill, they are building some type of building. The main thing for that nation was, it was a powerful nation. And we will see later on in the ayat, Allah gave them a lot of blessings of this dunya. <coughs> so the main goal of their life was entertainment. That nation was only living to entertain themselves. That's all. That was the purpose of the life. So now, wherever there is a hill, there is a mountain, there is a high place, they would go and build some type of building over there where they would have a place to have some entertainment and enjoyment for themselves. See nowadays, on the mountains, on the hills. In fact, we have gone ahead of that nation, may Allah protect. You see, each of those crimes that each of the nations committed, now you see it combined being committed in the world. Nowadays, 
when it comes to the hills and those places, of course, people are building all type of things over there. Places of entertainment are up there. Those are the most expensive places. And the castles of the big shots are being built over there. People who have a lot of money, they would build it up there. Now, because we don't have enough hills and mountains, we started building towers so we can build things on top of them. See, we went ahead of that nation. They used to just build it on hills and mountains. We started building even towers now and building have restaurants on top of the tower. Pay just to go and look down from the restaurant. Just to see down, you go and you buy a ticket to go up there and pay, pay for it. And then if you, uh, if a person is even further into this, then there are places where you go up and there are clubs up there and there are, the, the, there are uh, pubs up there and there is a restaurants up there, subhanAllah, all kind of things. Ayatan ta'batun. That you build these type of places, these type of signs, these type of uh, things there just for wasting time. Abath, abath. What is abath? When you do useless things that do not benefit you in any way. And you are building all of those buildings in those high places. Which means those are the things that any newcomer will come and look at. Anyone will come to this town and there is a place that there is a building that's a high rise. Of course, from distance, that person will be able to see it. And then you see glass on top and he will ask, what is up there? What is there? And whatever is there, then this is the thing that he will look at in this town that I went to that town and I saw this. This is ayatan ta'batun. That you are just building these type of places for wastage of time and for wastage of resources for no benefit to you in, in, which, in, in any way. وَتَتَّخِذُونَ مَصَانِعُ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَخْلُدُونَ And you construct castles, palaces, as if you are going to live there forever. One is, we see the big palaces, castles that people build for millions and millions. And you look at it and you think, how long this person is going to live in there? But it is with ourselves also. Sometimes we consider our homes a place where we are going to live forever. This is where I'm going to be for the rest of my life. And sometimes, you know, people come and say, you know, I bought this, it has a lifetime guarantee. And my always question is, whose lifetime? Your lifetime, this item's lifetime, or the seller's lifetime? If the seller dies tomorrow, then what? Your lifetime guarantee is over in one day. So, there is nothing, I mean, our lifetime has no guarantee whatsoever. This life has no guarantee. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the way you build your castles and you build, you build your palaces, as if you're going to live forever in these places. What are you doing for your akhirah? Are you building anything in your akhirah? When Harun al-Rashid was on his deathbed and uh, Bahlul was there, Harun al-Rashid asked him, Bahlul, why are we scared of death? He said, because we build our castles, our castles here and we don't build them up there. So we are afraid to go to a place where we don't have a residence. We don't know where we are going, where I'm going to stay there. So of course there is a fear now. And then, وَإِذَا بَطَشْتُمْ بَطَشْتُمْ جَبَّارِينَ When you see someone, you seize them as tyrants, when you strike, when you attack someone, you go as a tyrant people, you don't have no rahmah, no mercy. There is a reason why they were doing this. We'll see it later. فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَاطِعُونَ Fear Allah and obey me. وَاتَّقُوا الَّذِي أَمَدَّكُمْ بِمَا تَعْلَمُونَ And fear the one who provided you with what you know. See, this is here a very important statement that we need to ponder on and telling us the main cause of that problem. Fear the one who provided you with everything that you know. He provided you with cattle and children and gardens and springs. Which means 
this was a nation, Allah opened the doors of Islamas for them. He opened the doors of blessings for them. He gave them a lot. He gave them a lot. In those days, having kennels was the best asset you can have. And for strength and personal life, children was the most powerful thing that you have. And then you have Jannat, you have gardens, and you have all of these springs that are flowing everywhere. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you all of these blessings. Truly I fear about you the punishment of a horrible day. And look at their response. قَالُوا سَوَاءٌ عَلَيْنَا أَوْ عَصْتَ أَمْ لَمْ تَكُمْ مِنَ الْوَاعِظِينَ They said, it is all the same for us. Whether you advise us or you don't advise us is not going to make no difference. Your advice is not getting nowhere. إِنْ هَذَا إِلَّا خُلُقُ الْأَوَّلِينَ These are simply the traditions of the predecessors and people that came before us. Our forefathers used to do the same thing. This is what a lot of our children say. You want me not to do these things, but you do it. When we tell children, stop doing son, this is haram, don't do this. He says, yeah, but my father does it too. What are you going to tell him? This is exactly what those nations are saying. You are stopping us from haram, but you are committing the haram. Our forefathers were doing it. This is what they're saying. Our forefathers were doing it. And we can't consider all of them to be wrong, so therefore we will just follow our forefathers. We will not be punished for this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains in Quran what was the main reason that this nation was not listening to their prophet in spite of seeing the miracles. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed these, this nation with a lot of gifts. As we see some of those ayat, some of the gifts they had. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, The people of Ad, they behaved arrogantly throughout the land, throughout the land, fil ard, without having any right to do so. وقالوا, their slogan, their claim, the thing that was making them do this, wherever they go, they are bossing around. They want to do anything they want, they feel like doing. They are not going to listen to no one because we are from this nation. Why are, is this person doing this in our country? Because he is from Qomahad, he can do whatever he wants. وَقَالُوا مَنْ أَشَدُّ مِنَّا قُوَّةً And they said, who is stronger than us in power? See? See the thing that is putting them in that situation? Look at their claim. Really, you need to put this phrase and this statement of theirs in, keep it in mind وَقَالُوا مَنْ أَشَدُّ مِنَّا قُوَّةً They said, who is stronger in power than us? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds to that. And he says, أَوَلَمْ يَرَوْا أَنَّ اللَّهَ الَّذِي خَلَقَهُمْ هُوَ أَشَدُّ مِنْهُمْ قُوَّةً Don't they see that Allah who created them, He has more power than them? Now, we need to remind ourselves and remember this. مَنْ أَشَدُّ مِنَّا قُوَّةً It's a claim. We may be thinking, yeah, there are, you know, the big countries or superpowers. Of course, Ad is the superpower of the time and they're claiming مَنَ أَشَدُّ مِنَّا قُوَّةً And some of the rulers in the world may say مَنَ أَشَدُّ مِنَّا قُوَّةً We can do whatever they want, but we don't, we, we really need, need to look at ourselves also. We shouldn't forget ourselves. We also fall into the same category sometime when we are at power. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, remember this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave every person certain powers within his capacity, within his boundaries. Allah has given us certain things that we can use or misuse. And many times these powers are being misused. For example, as a child, when the child grows up and now he wants to do or she wants to do things, parents don't approve of it. Every sometime the child goes home and threatens parents. I'm going to leave. And parents, no, no, come on, sister, let us talk. See, he's using his power. He has a power to leave. I don't need my parents. Parents need me. They don't need him because the 
need his money? No, because of their love, because they care, and he doesn't care. So therefore, he doesn't need his parents, so I'm going to leave. I'm going to just go away. I'm going to stop studying. You have some power in your control. You are misusing it between husband and wife. You see it a lot of times. I'm going to do this. It depends on who is in power. And that person will make that statement. I'm going to do this. And the smile tells us that who makes that statement. And you are used to hearing that statement now. That I'm going to do this. And you know what that this is. So those who are not married. They still don't have that experience. But inshallah soon. We are making dua for you. That you get married. So, this is what it is. It is a power. It is a power that a person misuses. Sometimes it's money. Money in your hand. Okay, I'm going to use it the way I want. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Man ashaddu minna huwa. Who can stop me? Who can prevent me from doing that? It, sometimes it's a status. Sometimes it's a position. Sometimes it's a job. Sometimes it's a title. It could be so many different things that Allah has, as I said, Every person, we need to look at ourselves. What are the special gifts that Allah has given me? And how I'm using them? And make sure they are not misusing in any way. This could be a very, very lengthy topic and something really as much as you ponder into it, you will see that a lot of time we ourselves need to really work on ourselves of not misusing these ni'mas of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this was the problem with those people. In Surah Al-Fajr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَلَمْ تَرَ كَيْفَ فَعَلَ رَبُّكَ بِعَاد Don't you see what Allah did to the people of Ad? Iram, the people of Iram, ذات العماد, they were like of the pillars. So, الَّتِي لَمْ يُخْلَقْ مِثْلُهَا فِي الْبِلَادِ The like of whom was never created in the land. It was such a powerful nation, as Masreen have rated, that these people were tall people. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Imam Kathir rahimahullah narrated a hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that it was, they were so strong that a person would carry a whole rock. He would carry the rock and walk with it without any have difficulty. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them strength and Quran speaks about it. Because of that strength, because of that power, and then other ni'mas are there also. So they have gardens, they have wealth, they have family, they have children. So all they are concentrating on enjoyment. If we look at our souls, Allah really has given us similar type of ni'mas today. And therefore we see, unfortunately, a lot of people, their concentration is only their enjoyment. How we enjoy our souls, have a good life, just as long as I secure my home, my job, and that and I'm living peacefully, then I don't have to worry about anything. This is how most of the people are living nowadays. Missing the salah, not a problem. Even children missing Jumu'ahs, not a big problem. Because they are heading towards a successful Iyazu Billah. And that is, they are heading towards obtaining that degree that we would like to obtain, we like them to obtain. They can miss Jumu'ahs. Rasulullah Sallallahu says a person misses three Jumu'ahs out of the fold of Islam. But according to our understanding, he is still doing okay. See? This is exact. We, we need to point out the problems. We need to understand what Allah is talking about. Apply it to our situation and see where we stand with it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Finally, I had to open the doors of adab on them. فَرْسَلْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ رِيحًا صَرْصَرًا We sent against them a furious wind. Now, rih sarsar. Sarsar, what does sarsar mean? In Arabic language, the word sarsar has two things in it. A wind that will have two things in it. One is, it's extremely cold. The other is that it makes a lot of noise. A lot of noise. In fact, you know, when you read the word, this is the beauty of the language also. When you read the word, See, sarsar, it's by itself, it shows you, it tells you about making some type of sound. So, it's a wind that makes a lot of noise. As Mufassirin have narrated, people sitting by the fire because it was extremely cold. And it came as adab, so of course, it's not going to be a normally cold as we have it sometime, but it will be as adab. So it's, it is supposed to freeze people up. People were sitting by the fire and they're freezing right there. 
Rihan Sarsa. And the sound of it was so disturbing that people were just getting unconscious just because of the sound of it. What happened as a result of that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, We're reading, تُدَمِّرُ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ بِأَمْرِ رَبِّهَا Start destroying everything with Allah's order. How are we going to run away from the air? Yesterday we were reading about water. Today we see the air. Necessities of life. We need water, we need air. You can't run away from them, you can't hide from them. And you can't stop them from getting you. There is no way. There is no way that we can stop it. In fact, today, if we look at everything that we have, everything that we have is based on the space. Everything that we have today, lights right now, sound system that we are having, our fans, anything. In fact, our water, our gas, our food that we warm up, everything is, depends on the space. If there is some trouble there in the space, everything is going to stop. And this is what subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing us here. To dammiru kulla shay'in bi amr rabbiha. That one started destroying everything with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's order. In other ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna arsalna alayhim rihan sarsaran fi yawmi nahsim mustamir. We send that very heavy, furious wind on them on a day of continuous misfortune for them. Tanzi'un nas. It was plucking people. You know the word naz'a is when you have a hair and you put it and pluck the hair? This is how what tanzi'u is. Pulling something out. It was pulling people away, out. Ka'annahum a'jazu nakhlim munqa'ir. As if they were trunks of uprooted palm trees. So all the town, you look at the town, people, because these are 60 feet, 100 feet, 100 feet tall people, and you see all of them laying down on the ground as if they are palm trees, the trunks of the palm trees. They are all falling down and they are all down on the ground. In Surah al haqq Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, سَخَّرَهَا عَلَيْهِمْ سَبْعَ لَيَالٍ وَثَمَانِيَةَ أَيَّامٍ For how long did it continue? Seven days and eight nights. Imagine heavy wind blowing and you see the roof of the house is blowing away. That will be in the first minute of it. How a person is going to spend the rest of the day? سَخَّرَهَا عَلَيْهِمْ سَبْعَ لَيَالٍ وَثَمَانِيَةَ أَيَّامٍ حُسُومًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala imposed that air on them, that wind on them for seven days, eight nights, continuous. And as I said, initially, because of the sound of it, and it's freezing. So just these two things are enough to disturb everyone that is living there, and then you are not dying right away. It takes days before you die. So the person will see the power of Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala. That look at my, until this day he was claiming no one can do anything to me. And he was claiming that nothing will happen to me. Oh, look at my strength. Look at my soul. Look at what I can do. Look at what I have. Look at my castles. Look at my assets. Look at my money. Look at my gardens. And now he's laying flat over there and looking at high hills and looking at what they have built over there, which is not of any help to them today. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from all of his adab and give us tawfiq to take our lessons from these beautiful stories that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is explaining to them, uh, to, uh, to all of us. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to refrain from all of this, this, this type of disobedience and all type of disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa sallallahu ta'ala ala khayri khalqih, Sayyidina wa Habibina wa Nabiyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma. مولاي صل وسلم دائما ابدا على حبيبك خير